This is Living Healthy with Jackie Bell, the show with the information on health that you need to know from people you can trust. Brought to you by The Woman in You. Hi, welcome to Living Healthy. I'm your host, Jackie Bell. Today we've invited Cheryl Worthington Turgeon. She's a health, nutrition, and life purpose coach from Fall River, and you also have an office in Westport, is that correct? Yes, that's Welcome, right. Cheryl, thank you for coming to our show. Oh, thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, Cheryl is a dynamic nutritionist, and tonight we've called the show topic, When Food is Your Enemy. And as a nutritionist, that might seem kind of like, um, not something that you would talk about. You would want food to be your friend as a nutritionist. You would want to teach your clientele about that. But there are times when food can be your enemy. And so tonight we'll be talking about food sensitivities. First, I'd like to introduce Cheryl a little bit more. Cheryl, if you could just tell us a little bit about your background, your formal education, and your journey into nutrition. That would give us a good idea of uh, you know, what your path has been and where you intend to go. I have a master's in public health from Boston University with a concentration in behavior change and a degree in psychology from Grand Valley State, a degree in journalism from Oakland University, and a little bit more recently earned a certification in um, nutrition as a holistic health counselor from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition in New York. And that was also through Columbia University. Most recently, I earned certification as a life purpose coach so that I can help women to really be all that they are. And um, tell us how you, how you uh, became interested, what woke you up to wanting to become involved in nutrition and helping people with nutrition, and then how that led you into life purpose coaching? Well, with the nutrition, I've always been somewhat interested in it, and I was getting restless in my corporate job and was looking for something else to do. And I found the website of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and it just grabbed me. And I read the entire site in one sitting and said, yes, I have to do this. And they actually they had a wonderful program where I could commute one weekend a month to earn my certification. Mm -hmm. And what I found in doing that, I had um, put on a good amount of weight and um, was unable to really lose much of it. I had gone to Weight Watchers and lost some, but then I just kind of leveled out and said, well, I'm middle-aged, you know, this is where I'm probably just going to be. Once I went to integrative nutrition and started experimenting with whole foods and learned something about food sensitivities, I tried taking both dairy and wheat out of my diet, and that weight just fell off. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was on to something with that, and I really wanted to help other women in the same way. Let's talk a little bit about food sensitivities. Most of us think about, well, well, we know that some foods are not good for us to eat, and we try to stay away from them to avoid weight gain or feeling bloated and uncomfortable. But there's good food that um, we can be sensitive to, and we don't really realize that. So could you just explain to us what food sensitivities are, what, what some basic common ones are, and how mm -hmm. you test for that? Sure. Food sensitivities, there is a theory, and Dr. Elizabeth Lipsky is um, someone who talks about this theory in her book, Digestive Wellness. The intestine, intestinal wall, can become somewhat permeable, and this can happen through um, taking, um, oh, anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin. Um, it can happen through eating processed foods. It can happen through 
um, having antibiotics. There are many ways that the intestinal wall can become more permeable. When that happens, a food that you eat, especially something that you eat regularly, um, a food molecule can get outside of the lining of the intestinal wall and actually get into the bloodstream. When that happens, our body actually sees that food as an invader and microphages go in for the attack. Well, the next time we eat that food, even though it may remain inside the intestine, our body still sees that as an invader and goes in for the attack again. And next thing you know, you have developed antibodies to that food. So does that, does that mean that we're not digesting the food down enough to become a proper nutrient in the bloodstream? Um, That's part of it. Um, and it, well, it can be part of it anyway. Um, or it could just be the permeability of the intestinal wall. Okay. So in either case, um, the food is an irritant to us. What are some common foods that you find it to be irritating to your clients? Um, the most common would be wheat, soy, corn. Um, and would these be processed necessarily? They could very well be because they are commonly used in processed foods so that you're likely to get them more often than you even realize. Mm -hmm. um, they're also foods that can uh, tend to be genetically modified. Oh, okay. And because that changes the protein structure. And exactly. So forth. Yeah. yeah. Makes it unrecognizable by our system. Right. And when it's genetically modified, it can even be modified to be um, pesticide resistant or even having a pesticide within it so that we're ingesting something that, as you said, our body does not recognize and we still don't know the effects of. And legally, do they have to label the genetically modified food? At this point, they don't. And it's something I think we will see. I know um, it definitely needs to be. The best way to avoid the genetically modified foods is to eat organic foods. Um, by definition, they cannot be genetically modified. So how do you test for food sensitivities? Well, a test that we do in my office um, is through, um, I have a registered nurse who does a blood test and we send that off to a lab who then tests for um, all of the antibodies. And there are a variety of numbers of foods that can be tested as well as environmental allergens and heavy metals and even the fillers that they use in um, pharmaceuticals. And when those are tested, we get the results back. And what we will find is that you may have some severe allergies, which means that there were many antibodies to that food. Um, those you would want to avoid for six months. And then there are others that are more moderate, and those you could avoid for three months. And then any that are just slight antibodies you want to do a four-day rotation of eating. Cheryl, tell us what some of the most common food sensitivities are. What are the symptoms that someone would have if they had food sensitivities? Well, first of all, some of the most common food sensitivities would be wheat or soy or corn. Um, others would be eggs. Um, but the wheat, soy, and corn are most common because they're in everything. They're in so many processed foods that people are eating them all the time and they aren't necessarily aware of that. So what symptoms would they tend to have? There's a range of symptoms. You can, from a person who has no symptoms to someone who gets maybe migraines, headaches, fatigue, um, 
it, you can get dizziness. Um, I've had clients who get um, rashes or breakout or... Um, and even for you, for a while, it was a weight gain, right? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so how would you help someone? Once you get the test results back and you see which foods are strong, the uh, client is strongly sensitive to, moderately sensitive to, what's a typical regime that you would put someone on? Do you give them nutritional supplements and dietary recommendations? How does that yeah, work? Um, well, if someone is severely um, allergic to a food, we want to take it out of their diet for six months. And if they're moderately sensitive, we would take it out of their diet for three months. And then if they're slightly sensitive, we would take it out of their diet for four days on a rotational basis. And in the meantime, what we want to do is really fortify the immune system. So we're looking at probiotics, um, nutritional supplements. There are um, several things that you can do to really um, boost your immune system. I also recommend that people take um, their lunch with them when they go to work so that they're not inadvertently getting the food allergy. Right. The main issue here is that you can't, this is something you can't really slip up on because you will go back to ground zero. What we're trying to do is eradicate the antibodies. And we can't do that if even one molecule of food shows up that is going to create those antibodies. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So it's more than just, uh, you know, taking a pill or, you know, taking a supplement and, and trying to cure the symptom like that. It's really a lifestyle change that ends up happening in the long run, isn't it? It really is because, you know, we're whole human beings, so everything that we do affects our health. Um, stress, of course, affects mm -hmm. our health. So learning some meditation, doing some yoga are a couple of things that would help to ease some of the um, food sensitivities. Um, you know, you really need to look at a person's whole life I have a tool that's sort of a wheel, and it, the um, client will rate their satisfaction in different areas from relationships to fitness to career um, to spirituality. And that helps us to determine what areas really need to be worked on. So let's talk more about your work as a life purpose coach and um, you, how you work with clients, whether on an individual basis, and I understand you also work in a group basis, like at, at a retreat. You, uh, you are actually having a retreat in April, I understand. Tell yeah. us how, that, how someone might fit into something like that and what, their, what kind of benefits they might come out with um, as a client, getting some personal guidance and then going in a group retreat. Okay, well, an individual client gets obviously one-on-one -on -one counseling. And we, I have programs that are anywhere from three months for food sensitivities up to six months for um, really a pretty comprehensive lifestyle change, which is really helping women to feel healthier, stronger, revitalized by eating whole fresh foods. And the retreat that we have coming up that I'm really excited about, that's April 16th and 17th, is called Celebrate Your Magnificence. And it's really about dealing with the time money crunch, helping people to get more of both, and feeling better by really power nutrition, you know, ways of boosting our energy and getting more vitality so that we really can do what we most want to do. And I will end that retreat with an exercise that uses a tool called a spiritual archetype assessment. And that really helps people to go a little bit deeper to 
determine more of who they are and what drives them so that they're ready to take that next step in making sure that they're living out their life the way they really want to. Do you find that people, when they're having difficulty with food sensitivities, that there's really a habit behind that that might be rooted in moods that they have and maybe feeling dissatisfied with their life because they really haven't grabbed onto a passion or sensed their destiny? Is that what you help people live with when you talk about mm. being a life coach or a life purpose coach? It really is. And I, you know, this just comes from my own experience where having been in the corporate world and reaching a point where I was dissatisfied and restless and really felt I needed to do something that resonated with me, um, I took a leap, you know, it was really a leap of faith to start my own business. And there are certain bumps along the way and we learn as we go. But I really want to help women to be able to express who they are through what they do and maybe shortcut some of those bumps. Mm -hmm. um, it's taking my experience and helping other women to really lead full, rich lives and fall in love with their lives. Can you give us maybe one example of a typical client? Someone who comes in, is facing certain challenges, mm -hmm. you've helped them through it through you know, a program that you designed for them and maybe an outcome that they've had that's been uh, positive or miraculous. Yeah, actually um, I had a client come in who was interested in weight loss, um, also had many symptoms that were indicative of candida and we started dealing with that first. Um, she and her husband both went on the diet and lost, she lost 48 pounds and he lost 32. Great. But you know she really got it. She said this isn't about the diet. Yeah. This is not about dieting. She said that she could taste foods better. She learned to start really taking good care of herself. Mm -hmm. Before that, I think, um, you know, she really sort of felt like she was at the mercy of life. And she was being thrown this way and that way. and. With this, she started to feel empowered that she was taking charge of her life. Mm. And um, another client that I have actually made the switch. She started out coming to me for um, some food issues and realized as we went along that one thing that was greatly contributing to those food issues was her occupation. And she said, How was that? How was it contributing? Well, she never had time to eat. <laughs> and she was very stressed. And so, eating on the run and having a quick fix of something sweet was a habit that she was having difficulty getting out of. Mm -hmm. Whereas, if we start looking at that situation and say, Well, how could we? Um, help you to do what you enjoy doing, but maybe not have it be under such stressful conditions. And so that sort of shift, you know, just moving into the life coaching aspect of my program. Yeah, and that sounds a lot like the topic of your retreat, trying to manage money and time. So yeah. how, how would uh, someone benefit by going to that retreat? What would they, what were some of the goals they would hope to achieve? Well, I think that they would get, um, Number one, they're going to get both practical and spiritual tips on how to better ma manage their money and their time so that they will be able to start making more money, keeping more money, and also making those crucial decisions about their time so that it's, when you're more conscious about those decisions, you find that you can carve out time for the things you most want to do. Mm -hmm. And 
in terms of the nutritional aspect, they're going to actually experience it. We have um, a gourmet chef who's preparing whole foods for us. So they'll be able to feel the difference of starting their day with a Whole Foods breakfast mm. and having Whole Foods for lunch and um, getting Whole Foods type snacks. So they're going to get some nurturing while they're there too. We have massage, we have reflexology, um, we have a yoga session that will be before each class. So what I'm really looking to do is help the exhausted executive or the aspiring entrepreneur to get a handle on what's causing stress in their lives mm -hmm. and then get some ideas and inspiration for where they want to go from there and relax. <laughs> Can you give us uh, a couple of ideas on some of these healthy snacks that you recommend for your clients something that we that's that's easy simple you know cost effective oh, yeah. um, that we could just you know throw in our purse or throw in a little bag and take with us in the car mm -hmm. to work to keep us from reaching for the wrong kinds of foods sure uh, one of my favorites and it's such an easy thing to grab and go with is an apple and a handful of almonds. Um, some of the other things you can do is take a brown rice cake and just, you can bring peanut butter with you, you could bring organic, of course. <laughs> um, you could bring some chopped veggies and maybe a little goat cheese and put that on your rice cracker. Um, what are some other things that I do? Just having cut up vegetables in a little plastic bag mm -hmm. gives you something to munch on when you need it. And people that are, I also work closely with people who are sugar sensitive and I have a five day um, sugar detox. Well in that there are high fiber bars that they can take mm -hmm. and you know it just I use it in the short term to help someone get off of sugar. Um, it's better than having gra grabbing the candy bar. Right, right. It's high fiber, low glycemic. So yes, it's still a processed food, but as a bridge to eating whole foods and to making better choices, I think it works. Okay. Could you please just uh, give us your website and your phone number so that if anyone wants to ask you more questions or find more information about your work and nutrition and life purpose coaching, they could call you or contact you? Oh, sure. Um, my website is www.yourhealthpotential.com and I can be reached at 508-689-4633. And do you like to correspond by email? Sure, email is fine. Um, that would be Cheryl at yourhealthpotential.com. Great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm sure that many of the people who have heard your show, heard the show today, will be interested in learning more about the retreat, which we didn't really talk about its location. And I understand it's at a beautiful place on Cape Cod. Oh, it so is. So it will it's be everything resort. that you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a relaxing experience, but also very educational. Mm -hmm. And. Um, Thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there any last little tips that you'd like to leave, leave us with? I mean, really, what you offer is so broad as you know, a life purpose coach, nutrition, and health and well-being. Um, well, I guess what I would say to anyone that's new to some of these ideas is you don't have to do it all at once. You can start small. In fact, if you tried to do everything at once, um, the kid in us always rebels and says, no, that's too much and goes running. So um, my advice would be to take it one step at a time. And if you have, just want to take one of the snack tips and make that change, every change counts. 
Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us again at Living Healthy. My name is Jackie Bell. I've been your host. We look forward to seeing you next time.